Hi and welcome to this introduction to M calibration and polyimide mode for Altair radios. Uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about our company and myself, and then I will talk about what our software products are all about. So, uh, the company is Polymer FEM LLC. We have been uh, uh, spun off from another company about a year ago in 2020, and we have two uh, software products called M calibration and PolyUMOD. Um, and um, myself, I have a, um, a background in polymer modeling. I've been working in this field for, for quite a while, more than 20 years now. I wrote a book a few years ago. Um, and I am the founder and managing principal at Polymer FEM LLC. And um, what I want to talk about here today is the work that we have been doing that has been leading up to these software products and how you can use the software to better simulate your soft materials, any polymer, adhesive, uh, biomaterial, uh, elastomer, or uh, adhesive. So there are a lot of different materials you can use this for. Um, so the products we have are focused on the material models and the material parameters. Um, and in this example, that to, to make this a little more visual, I'm going to talk about a golf ball. A golf ball is a surprisingly complicated structure. It has multiple layers, typically with different materials, with different properties. And if you're an engineer working on designing a golf ball, you need to think carefully about what the properties obviously are of these materials. And how would you do that? And that's really what I want to show and talk a little bit about in our example here. So first, let's talk about generally finite element simulations. So finite element simulations of this type uh, have, needs three types of inputs. You need the geometry of the part you're interested in. You need the load and boundary conditions of, of the problem. And then you need the specification of the materials that, you're in, that these parts are made out of. And the material behavior is where we sit and we work in our company. There are two types of things you need to worry about when you're thinking about material behavior. You have the actual material model itself, which model to choose, and then the actual parameters to go into that model. So one of our products, the PolyUMOD library, is a library of material models that you can select for use in your FE simulation. And M calibration is a tool that allows you to convert combinations of experimental data into parameters that you use in your FE simulation. So that's kind of the big picture idea of where our software products help engineers come up with better simulations in the end. So if we look at Hyperworks, Hyperworks supports many different material models. There's a drop-down menu here. You can see uh, just the start of it. So clearly, there are a lot of choices here. And um, that's very useful, right? The problem that many engineers are faced with is, well, first of all, which of these should I pick? And secondly, if I pick one of these, like in this case, the Bergstrom Boys model, which is a model I developed uh, a number of years ago, there are a number of parameters go into it. How are you going to find these parameters from, from data? And a lot of engineers find this a kind of a, a troublesome step because they haven't necessarily seen a tool that can do this. And that's what we typically help uh, companies with. So the first of our products is PolyUMOD, as I mentioned. What, what does PolyUMOD do? It, in essence, adds a, a additional models to this list of choices of available material models. There's about 20 more that it dumps in here in a virtual way. Uh, and here's a screenshot from our website where we talk about one of these particular models. So you may wonder, OK, so that sounds interesting, but why would I need that? Radius has already a long list of options there. And that is true. Uh, the value of the PolyUMOD library is that it gives you additional models that can be more advanced and more accurate in many cases, particularly for uh, all kinds of polymers, plastics, rubbers, etc. Um, so that's where we sit. We can work with uh, very complicated viscoplastic material behaviors, residual strain, etc. And we can do it in a super accurate way for problems that need that kind of behavior um, for the simulation. M calibration. Uh, allows you to take uh, the, any combination of experimental data, really, and convert it into these parameters. And here's a screenshot of the M calibration software. It does this in a very intuitive way, and it's uh, very quick at finding these parameters for you. Once you have them, you can export it into uh, a radios format. So that's how, how that would work. 
So back to our golf ball example, the workflow that we typically follow and that what we recommend is that the, you need to test the different materials in your product, experimentally test them, find a stress strain response basically for each materials. This is not unique for our software, but it, it's required for any finite element simulation to have good experimental data to base your material models upon, of course. Then we use the M calibration software to convert that experimental data into the parameters that go into radios. Uh, the material models that are supported are either our polymod library or one of the built-in radios material models. And then the design engineer can just run their simulations as they normally do, can iterate on design, can swap in new materials, etc., and sometimes iterate in this uh, flow here in order to come up with an optimal design uh, and material selection for their product. If you want to learn more about these things, I recommend uh, that you take a look at our website. We have a wide variety of articles that talk about material models in general, how you use these things, what they're good for, etc. Uh, we have a YouTube channel that we add uh, new videos to every week, uh, and uh, that can be a useful resource to sort of see visually how you do a number of things, and I try to explain there in the videos that I do about uh, some of the different topics that engineers are challenged by. We have a weekly newsletter that you can sign up for on our website, and also we do a lot of training classes. Uh, training is an important topic uh, we have found we like to uh, empower engineers to get the best possible solutions for their problems that they're simulating. And that often requires a little bit of training in terms of what are the different material models that are available, how do they work. Uh, so we have some free classes, we have paid for classes, and uh, we are happy to work with you if you're interested in taking one of these classes. What I want to do is I want to do a live demonstration of uh, how you can use M calibration to quickly calibrate a material model. So in my example, I'm going to talk about a material that we have test data for. We have three experimental files. Here they are. Each of them contain time, engineering strain, and engineering stress. So to work with this, I'm just going to highlight these three files. I'm going to copy them to the clipboard. I'm going to open an M calibration window. And here is my window. I'm going to the calibrate section of the main window of M calibration. I will paste in my data here. And here it is. It's uh, pasted in. I'm going to change the graph to plot engineering stress, engineering strain. I will also demonstrate if you zoom in in this window here, you can see that the data actually is a little bit more interesting than what it first looked like. We have uh, cycles. We load and unload the test, uh, the material a few times at smaller strain here to probe the viscoelastic relaxation of this material at different strain rates. Um, what I will do next is I will just rename these uh, test files so that they have names uh, that are uh, based on what's in the file. So that's fully automatic. I select that and do that. I'm going to plot stress versus time on the graph here to just demonstrate just how much this material relaxes uh, when given a chance. This is about a minute or so. It relaxes a lot, as you can see, pretty substantial relaxation. And that's pretty common for many polymers that people don't always keep, keep track of their viscoelastic and viscoplastic response. Uh, with M calibration, it is as easy to calibrate a viscoelastic material model as it is to calibrate the hyperelastic model or a plasticity model for that matter. So that's why I often encourage engineers to take advantage of that uh, ability. So here's the data. We have not read it in, we plotted it. The next step is to select and calibrate a material model. So we'll just pick one material model from our extensive library here. We have a number of uh, material models divided by finite element solver. For radius, we have uh, a number of template material models. We have the Bergstrom Boyce model. And we're adding new models all the time to this uh, software here. Um, I'm going to pick for my demonstration a polyumod material model. I'm going to pick the polyumod Bergstrom Boys model. I just select it here, and the software will populate a table here with the actual parameters that this model needs. And the parameters are based on the experimental data there, that there are some logic that defines the best guesses here. 
So if I click run once, you will see that uh, here is the prediction. Let's see if I can move this legend over there. Um, so the initial guess that the material uh, of the parameters that the software came up with gives an error above 40%, which is not awesome, but it's kind of in the right regime at least. Um, how does the software come up with these dashed lines, the predictions? Well, what it does is that it creates one element, finite element models for each of these three tasks. And each of these tests, we know how the strain was imposed as a function of time. So M calibration it runs an internal solver that calculates the stresses following the, exactly the same strain history that was done in the experiment. So it's loaded, it unloaded, it holds it if the experiment is holding the strain constant. So that's what it's doing. And that's fully automatic. You don't need to think about those things that just happens by itself. Um, but we need to do, we do need to calibrate this model. We need to optimize these parameters so it actually uh, fits the data a little bit better. So I can do that by clicking run calibration, which brings up a calibrate window. I'm going to just say extensive automatic method, which is the default. I start running it. At this point, uh, the software is manipulating these parameters a little bit in order to better match the data. In the lower right corner, it writes a little bit of information about what it's doing. Um, I like to look at the optimization progress window. It shows us the error at this time for, for each attempt it's doing. We can see the error is going down from about 40% down to about 15% at this point. And it will continue improving uh, this uh, fit uh, by manipulating these parameters for us. And we don't need to worry about this. We don't need to uh, assist it at this time. It's fully automatic. And it will stop once it's thinking that it found the best uh, solution to this calibration problem. I'm just going to stop it here. The error is now about 12% or so, which is good enough for our demonstration. Um, the next step, once you've done this, is to export your model. I would export this into one of the following formats here. Uh, of course, radius is our target here uh, for this demonstration. I click on save. I'm just going to save it in the same directory as before. I can open this file. This is the file that M calibration generated for us. It has all the parameters that goes into the radius rad file or into hypermesh, hyperworks. Uh, it's, in this case, it's a user 01 material, but if you picked one of the native radius material models, it would just use the particular name that was listed there. And that's really all there is to it. Um, it's very easy to use the software to calibrate the material model, and it allows you to very quickly try different material models to come up with the best fit possible. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, head over to polymerfem.com and ask them there. Thank you.